the full print on demand tutorial by me, Shimmy Morris. You guys have been waiting for this tutorial for a long time and I've finally made it. It's taken me ages and just shooting has taken me a while, but I hope you absolutely love it. And because it's taken me so long to shoot, all I ask for you is that you share it so that other people can see it, other people can view it. I want to get as many people as possible watching this print on demand tutorial just because it makes the whole process of making it so much more worth it. So let's just get right into it. First, let's have a look at the index so that you know if you want to jump to a section, you can and just you know where everything is. So in section one, we're going to be talking about this course, a 60 second overview of who I am, why I think I'm qualified to teach you. That section is going to be over really quickly because I don't want to bore you. And in section two, we're going to be talking about Teespring and Printful. It's fully explained what is Teespring, Teespring's website broken down section by section, what is Printful, and Printful's website broken down section by section. And then the third section is going to be finding winning designs. This is possibly the best section in the course just because this is where most people struggle. So websites to find the best ideas, different types of designs, a list of the most popular niches, stick around for that bit, multiplying your ideas, and 50 job titles that you can target today. So again, stick around for that bit because that's me just giving you ideas. Section four is creating the perfect t-shirt. This is principles of a successful t-shirt, how to design a t-shirt, places to outsource t-shirt designs if you don't have a design bone in your body, how to use Teespring and Printful editors, pricing strategies, and how to write winning descriptions because Getting them to your page is just step one. You need to then convert them into a sale. And the last section, section five, is time to advertise. The advertising platforms we're going to be looking at are Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. We're gonna talk about how to create mock-ups for your ads, video mock-ups and photo mock-ups. And then we're gonna have an in-depth look at Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube and a semi-in-depth look at TikTok, but that's going to be more of a casual conversation about how to use the platform for selling your t-shirts. So let's start with section one, welcome to this course. Who am I? Well, you'll see I am the guy in yellow, and I said I would do this in 60 seconds, so let's do this. I absolutely love snowboarding, I love cars, and I have been working on Amazon for the last five years doing Amazon FBA. I've been teaching Amazon for the last three years. We have a full Amazon course and I've done print on demand. I've done Upwork, I've done photography, I've done lots of little jobs here and there. And I've pretty much been working since the age of 13. And as soon as I finished school, I started working on internet marketing type businesses. So that is me, that picture at the bottom is me. And this, you might not believe me, you don't have to believe me, but that is me snowboarding. I absolutely love snowboarding, it's one of my favorite hobbies. One of the things I love to do is do some sort of extreme sports. I absolutely love that, it's racing cars, snowboarding, those kind of things. But that is who I am. Let me get straight to the next bit now. Why am I qualified to teach you? Well, I launched this particular kind of course, the first version of this course, you could say, on Udemy quite a few years ago. And you can see here by the pictures, I've got 31 pages of reviews. I've got a hell of a lot of five-star reviews, and I've had over a thousand students take that course, over a hundred glowing reviews of that course. And personally, I've earned over $70,000 from t-shirt sales alone. So I took this course down two years ago as I wasn't happy with Udemy's platform and I never really bothered to launch it again on any other platform. Obviously, a lot of the information in that course is a bit outdated, so you're probably thinking, well, if you launched this course two years ago, it's probably not gonna work now. Well, I've gone through and recreated all of it so that it's completely relevant for 2020, and instead of selling it again, I thought I would just give the whole thing for free on YouTube, because back then I didn't really have a YouTube channel, now I do, so why not give the whole thing away for free on YouTube? And just to reiterate, all of this is completely remade for 2020. Section two, Teespring and Printful fully explained. What is Teespring? Well, I thought who would be better to explain Teespring than Teespring themselves? So I took this screenshot from their website. I'll just read it for you. So how does Teespring work? Well, Teespring is a free platform that lets you create and sell over 20 kinds of products with no upfront cost or risk. They handle everything from printing to shipping to customer service. Teespring is for everyone entrepreneurs looking to start their own business, 
creators wanting to sell merch on their YouTube platform or their social media platform or charities just looking for a way to raise funds with some sort of charitable t-shirts. Now, why should you use Teespring? Well, their goal is to pretty much empower anyone. These, some, of these, some of this is irrelevant, but basically they want you to be able to turn your ideas into products, brands, businesses, and that's why they take the hassle out of everything. They ship it, they handle the customer service, they do all of that. So let's have a look at the process. So product creation, you're gonna start by designing a product. You can do that on Teespring's own design website. They have like an editor, which we're gonna look at a bit later on in this video, but you can start there and then you're gonna use tools like promotional codes and everything is hosted on Teespring, by the way. Teespring hosts stores, promotional codes, messaging, and pretty much everything. You don't need another website. It's all done on their platform, all right? And then you have to advertise it, obviously. And then order fulfillment. Once a buyer places an order, they'll take care of the production and the shipping. There is no upfront cost to Teespring. You launch an, a design on Teespring's website. When you get a sale, someone buys that, when someone buys that product and you get a sale, let's say you're, you sold a t-shirt for $20, but the base cost of that t-shirt is $10. Teespring will just take $10 off that $20 sale. So you don't actually have to pay any money up front. The only money you're paying up front is your advertising cost. Now, if you have a humongous YouTube audience or a Twitter audience or Instagram following or whatever, a huge social media following, and you don't need to pay for advertising, then this is a completely and utterly free business. You just have to launch a t-shirt, which takes maybe an hour and then share it to all your followers and they will go and buy it. And then that is when you will pay, you'll get, you will pay out of your profit. So you don't actually lose out on any money. And then of course, customer service, Teespring have handle all the customer service and they have amazing customer service It's really good. So they handle all that kind of stuff. It's very similar to Amazon FBA, to be honest. Right, let's have a look at Teespring's website step by step. We're gonna go over the listings, the storefronts, marketing, messages, and promotions. So this is what the Teespring platform looks like. You've got listings, and I said I'm gonna go over listings, storefronts, marketing, messages, and promotion. Okay, so you've got your listings here. This is just very, very simply where all your listings live. So obviously I haven't posted on Teespring for quite a long time because I don't really use Teespring anymore. I use Printful now. Um, but these are all your different listings. So these are ones that are old, but this is where they would all be. Your products ordered, your profit to be paid and total donations. So for example, if I go to all time, you'll see total product sold, total profit. Okay. And then obviously yesterday we'll have nothing and today we'll have nothing and active will have nothing. So that is your listings page. Okay. Very, very simple. Your storefronts. Okay, let's have a look at our storefronts. So storefronts could be on Teespring, you can create a new storefront per niche. So for example, this could be a gun niche. This is a back to the future day. This is a guitarist niche. So F chord that, F chord it, F chord them, right? So this was the Pokemon niche, but obviously that was all copyrighted. So it didn't really do anything. I was just trying to hit on a trend. So here you can create different stores and then you can view your store. And once you've in your store, you can actually advertise your store. So obviously I don't really have any products in my store now because those t-shirts aren't live anymore, but this is where they would be. And then you can actually send people with this link directly to your store. Okay. The next thing we said we wanted to look at was marketing. And marketing is where we would enter our Facebook pixel ID, right? This is the ID. This is where we're going to get from Facebook. This is going to keep track of everything. We can do the same with Twitter, with Pinterest and with Google. But for now, we're just going to put the Facebook one in. Okay. So in order to do that, you go to Facebook, you go to your ads manager, and then let's go into all tools. And then there should be, here we go under measure and report. You should have pixels and then you can copy and paste your pixel into this area here. So you would do that just by going through add new data source, Facebook pixel, and going through the steps. Okay, we're not gonna go through the steps now, but going through the steps. The next thing we said we wanted to talk about was messages. This is really, really cool because you can message every one of your buyers. Okay, so for example, obviously all my inbox sizes, all my thing, 
a, a nothing, right? We have to go all the way back to the first ever one to start getting like a few thousand people in these audiences. But you can message them, zero of three messages, okay? It's brilliant. Now, the reason why Printful is a bit better than, than this is because this whole zero of three messages is rubbish, right? You can only do three a week. Whereas on Printful, you could pretty much do one every single day. It's completely up to you, you have full control. Okay, but this is still a very cool thing to know with Teespring that you can message people. And then you want to go to promotions. Promotions are where you can create discounts. So three day promo, special, special Facebook, Pokemon, free ship, five pounds off, five dollars off, sorry, Black Friday. Here's where you can create all your promotions. Okay, you can see how people redeem them when they expire. I haven't used them in a very long time, but this is where it can happen and you can it's pretty much easy. You put the code in, the type the amount and the expiration, and then you click add discount. Very, very easy, and again, you can also watch this how to, but you really don't need to. And lastly, I just want to go over pricing discounts with you because this is a new thing for Teespring and it's very cool. You pretty much go up tiers, right? So 100 units till the next tier, and that's when you start getting your discount. So you get a 40 cent discount per item, right? And you can go all the way to a 40, dollar 80 discount when you get to 20,000 sales and up so this is actually really really cool now they introduce this after otherwise i would be over here at the three dollar 40 discount which is super annoying but what can you do um and you've got to do it this month as well so it's it, it it's they've done it very well but it's a great way to save a bit of extra money all right so that is the teespring website what is Printful? Well, Printful is slightly different. It's more of a print-on-demand platform, which is why I decided to include it. Printful prints and fulfills the order pretty much like it says in the name, print and then full, fulfill. Unlike Teespring, you don't have built website pages ready to advertise. You have to connect your website and I've included a spreadsheet made by Printful showing the most popular websites to connect your t-shirts with. For this reason, I think Printful is more of a sustainable, scalable business because you are launching it on your own website, you have full control of customer service, you have full control of everything, and they are just handling the fulfillment side of it, and that's about it, right? You design the t-shirt on their website if you want, and then it automatically gets pushed to your website, and I'm gonna explain that in the next slide. So it allows you to build up your own website and actually create a branded business, and that's why I'm including it. And if you're looking to start a print on demand business, if you just want some, I don't know, I wanna say quick cash, but nothing is quick cash, so don't ever think anything is quick cash. But if you just want to have some one hit wonders with some t-shirts and make some money, then Teespring is probably the way to go. If you want to actually create a print on demand business like we are trying to do here and make something scalable that eventually you could probably even sell, right, like a branded, t-shirt company or, or a clothing company, then Printful is the way to go. So here are all the websites you can connect Printful to. Now, the top one that they recommend is Shopify and that's because they have pretty much everything. Live shipping rates, personal server required, no. Product push to store, yes. Order import is immediate. Shipping status is automatic. Displays out of stock, yes. There's no access to the marketplace, but the ease of installation is super fast. And in terms of price, there's a percentage of revenue plus the subscription fee, which starts at $29 a month at Shopify. You've also got obviously Etsy, WooCommerce, Squarespace. You can pretty much do it on anything. Now let's have a look at Printful's website step by step. I'm only going to focus on product templates, file library, stores, and connecting Shopify, just because I don't think it's necessary to really discuss any other aspects of the website. Here is my Printful account. So now I just wanna quickly go over product templates, file library, stores, connecting Shopify. This is a very new account. I've only recently started selling on Printful, but I've literally fell in love. I think it's brilliant and it's just very, very useful, especially when you connect it to Shopify. So let's start with product template. So product template is pretty much the templates of the product. Okay, so you can see these are just some of the t-shirts I've done. I've been dabbling with some snowboarding ones. I just thought it was pretty cool. But you can add another t-shirt. You can add men's clothing, women's clothing, hats, kids, accessories, home living, and collections. They've got a humongous amount of different things that you can sell, right? And then you've got jackets, polo t-shirts, embroidered shirts. You've got a lot of stuff, okay? Sweatpants, There's, you're not shy of anything, right? Not, not at all. So that is the product templates. And what you would do is you would go through, you'd pick one. So let's say you pick one and then you could either design it 
here or you can upload your own file and here's where you could choose embroidery or printing and then you could select your color you could select all the colors if you really wanted to and you can upload your file add text or add clip art and again there is a tutorial for you which is why i'm not going into such detail here because it's just not necessary the next thing is file library now file library is where you're uploaded all of your designs so for example i don't know why it says there's nothing here because i've uploaded a few designs ah right for my snows bros and hose shop here are all my designs so you can see right and then i've obviously also created a, another store which hasn't have any designs in it but this is where you can upload your designs so you just click upload and you would find the exact design now the measurements i'm going to discuss with you when we're talking about actually designing the t-shirt so i'm not going to mention that in this video lastly you've got or second lastly i should say you've got stores and this is where you can just create your stores you can connect to different platforms again i recommend shopify it's the best way to do it so you click choose platform and you would make your way and connect a shopify which again is really really easy it goes to shopify where you log in you sign up it's such an easy process honestly it's so fast you can literally do it in about three minutes and i don't need to make a video on how to do it in this tutorial even though this is a full tutorial just because it's so basic step by step you just go from one step to the next it, you don't you don't need a, a, a you don't need a uh, step by step of that that's really really easy so that is pretty much everything you need to know about the printful all these other things just don't worry about any of that stuff it's not important what's most important is creating a t-shirt connecting your shopify and then merging them together which again is all done through shopify very very easy section three finding winning designs now here are some websites to find some ideas but before i tell you them Firstly, I just want to stress, never, ever steal anyone's design, only take inspiration, okay? Don't ever look at someone else's design and think, oh, because I saw it on Amazon, I can launch it on Teespring, no one's going to notice. Do not steal people's designs, just use niches as inspiration, use some maybe words as inspiration or some design cues as inspiration, but don't ever steal someone's design. Teespring.com forward slash discover is a great website to get some inspiration, there's a lot of designs on there. Amazon is another amazing website to get inspiration. This one also allows you to see how popular the different design and niches are. I made a review of the tool Merch Informer which breaks down Amazon's t-shirt and, and lets you find the most popular one in seconds. That is a great tool if you want to spend a bit of money on it then it literally tells you the best sellers on Amazon. And then again Google is always going to be your best friend. Searching funny or jokey followed by your niche and then the t-shirt for example, funny cat t-shirt or jokey dog t-shirts will always bring up so many different designs. That is where I was pretty much got most of my inspiration from when I was designing t-shirts. Pinterest is another brilliant website as it allows you to see which ones are the most popular ideas because of the amount of pins they have. So another website I heavily, heavily use is Pinterest just because I could see the amount of pins a certain t-shirt had 500 a thousand ten thousand and i can see wow people are really loving that they're really connecting to that so i could create something around that niche and around that same joke but obviously my own design now here are some just more websites that i've used i didn't want to go into each website so just take a screenshot or write these down you've got cafe press zazzle spreadshirt moon pig t-shirt studio qwerty char grilled and snog tees. These are all different websites I have used in the past to pretty much get inspiration for different t-shirt designs and niches. <clears throat> now there are three different types of designs. You have one-off trendy designs, you have time of the year designs like Christmas, Father's Day, a wedding, and then you have scalable designs and evergreen designs. So a one-off trendy design is a design that is pretty much in the name, it's trendy, right? So imagine you see something in the news, right? It's a trendy topic, something big is happening. I hate to say this and I hate to see people doing this, but obviously you know Kobe Bryant recently passed away. It's really, really sad, horrible, horrible crash. Um, and it's just, it's really upsetting. But a lot of people are monetizing that and making t-shirts around it and trying to make money off of it. Now, obviously that is a trendy design, but that is a bad example because you should never 
make money off someone else's misfortune. But another trendy kind of topic was, you know, remember fidget spinners, you know, those things. That's another one you could, for example, have a t-shirt with a fidget spinner on it or something like that. Just going off trendy viral designs is a big, big one. Now that's good for one hit wonders. Okay, so that means you launch the t-shirt and it sells and then it pretty much dies when the trend dies. Okay, so that's good for just making quick cash. Time of the year designs are brilliant because you can relaunch the t-shirt or the jumper or whatever you whatever you create every single year. So you've got obviously Christmas, uh, uh, Easter, Father's Day, Mother's Day, St. Paddy's Day, all of these different types of times. And I put wedding in there as well because let's say you have an upcoming wedding with a lot of guests or something, you want to create a t-shirt for that, right? So there's a lot of different time of the year days which are really good and they are kind of like one hit wonders except you can one hit wonder them every single year so Christmas will come around every single year so you can just launch it again however a Christmas t-shirt is not going to sell in March that's just the way the world works and then you have scalable designs and evergreen designs these are my favorite because they make the most amount of money and they're the most consistent for example a design talking about someone's job or a design just a, gen a generic design about cats or guns or dogs or fire trucks or whatever they may be they won't ever go down and they will just continuously get sales over and over and over and over and over right so that is what a scalable design and evergreen design is that is my favorite kind of design saying that the largest campaign i ever had was a time of the year design it was a father's day t-shirt but in terms of lots of campaigns the combined campaigns i had with my scalable and evergreen designs far outshone my single father's day design. Does that make sense? I made a lot more money from all of my scalable designs than I did just from that one Father's Day design. The most popular niches. So here's a list of some very popular niches. You can take a screenshot of this if you want. You've got guns in the Second Amendment. You've got cats, so just general cat t-shirts. Dogs, pug, poodle, golden retriever, labrador. Jobs, fireman, nurse, engineer, bartender, carpenter, welder, electrician, and baker. Electrician and baker. And then you've got family, so you've got the father, the mother, grandpa, grandma, uncle, aunt, and then however you want to say those words, like mama, papa, um, mima, like all these different ways of saying them, like you're good. And then you've got some sports, so you've got teams like NBA, NFL, Premier League, Champions League, and you've got golf and fishing. Now, in terms of sports teams, avoid those, do not do those because they are all trademarked. But in terms of the actual sport, like basketball, football, golf, fishing, they all work brilliantly. So let's talk about multiplying ideas. And this pretty much only works for the evergreen and scalable idea. Multiplying one idea allows you to make serious money with as little effort as possible. For example, I personally had a t-shirt that said, I'm a, and then it was a job title, what's your superpower? So it, for example, it said, I'm an electrician, what's your superpower? This idea can be used across so many different job titles and I spread it across 50 different job titles. I made, I'm a baker, what's your superpower? I'm a nurse, what's your superpower? I'm a nursery teacher, what's your superpower? I'm a teacher, what's your superpower? Do you get the point? It's the same design just with a different word there and, it, and every time I, I targeted, I obviously targeted that word. So I targeted, targeted an electrician or a bartender or a plumber or a teacher or a nursery teacher. So it was very, very, very targeted. The family t-shirts can also be easily multiplied across many family members. So if you have something, I don't know, like the world's greatest father, you can just do the world's greatest mother, the world's greatest grandpa, the world's greatest grandmother, the world's greatest auntie, the world's greatest brother. You get the point, right? So it can easily be multiplied if the idea is working. Here are 50 different job titles to target. Take a screenshot of this. I have done immense research on all of this and these are brilliant. So here's a list of job roles that you can target for future T designs. I have used this list a lot and found that bartender, baker, painter, technician, artist, carpenter, EMT and welder work extremely well, probably the best. This is all from testing many designs and many ads. So do your testing and don't expect results straight away. We have to spend a little to make a little, okay? So there are so many here. Personal trainers, a huge one as well, which is coming in a lot more now in 2020. But there are a lot, a lot, a lot of designs here. A lot of job titles, I should say, that you can go and target. 
Section four, creating the perfect t-shirt. Principles of a successful t-shirt. T-shirts are always a good seller. It's in the name, right? Successful t-shirt, t-shirts are gonna be a good seller. In the winter, sell hoodies, all right? They go for $39.95 and they are huge profit margins. My most popular base color has always been black. White designs have always been the biggest seller and they're the cheapest as it's just one color. So a white design on a black t-shirt have always sold the best for me. And this is all based off my testing. I would always recommend running your own test as well to find out what's working for you and for your niche. But in terms of my testing, t-shirts sold the best more than like mugs or jumpers, or hoodies or towels. T-shirts always sold the best. And in the winter, hoodies are just brilliant because you make such a huge profit margin on them. So places to outsource t-shirt designs, you have Fiverr, right? You have Upwork and you have 99 designs. Fiverr is going to be the cheapest and that is pretty much where you can just pay someone to create a design for you. Upwork, you actually employ someone per hour to create some designs for you and 99 designs, you say what you want. A lot of people try and design something and you pick a winner and then they get paid. Those are the three different kinds of websites. This is if you have absolutely zero design skill and you don't know what you're doing, but you still wanna do a print on demand business, you can by using these kinds of websites. How to use Teespring and Printly's T-shirt editor. Now I want to take you through designing a T-shirt on Teespring's platform and on Printful's platform. So I'm gonna start with Teespring. So you will just click here, start designing at the top. It's very, very simple. You pick what you want to design. So we're gonna just go for T-shirts. Right, we're gonna go with just a classic T. Now you can either buy it or you can design to buy or design to sell. So we're gonna to design to sell. And you can see here's the t-shirt, so you've got the front, the back. You can either add your own image, right? Or you can add text, depending on what you want to do. I would always, always add my own image. So let's just say, hello, YouTube. Right, I would always add my own image just because it's going to be a much better design you can then see a preview of what that would look like right you can choose your colors all your colors here you can set your price so at the moment if you set it at 21.99 you've got 1142 profit so i don't know if i've spoken about it yet but i say that you should get a minimum of ten dollars profit and then if you price from the eu 24.99 you're looking at a 12 euro profit the next thing you do is click continue you can add this to many other things as well if you want. So you can select styles and add a hoodie. So let's do this one. Right, and look at that, $18.78 profit. So immediately you've got a lot more profit. Right, add a hoodie, click continue. And now you're creating your listing. So you would create your title. So you would say YouTube T. And then you'd say, do you post on YouTube? You need this. Hello YouTube for your videos. Click the green button below to buy. This is a limited edition and will only last the length of this video. Right, very simple. You can then have your URL, you can make a custom URL, visibility, public or private or unlisted, and then you can add it to one of your stores. Right, once you've done that, you just click publish listing. Okay, and then it does it. Let's have a look. Right, this looks like a beautiful website, super easy, super simple. Teespring, your listing is live, okay? Very, very easy. Click the green button below to buy, add to cart, there we go. Do you post on YouTube? Super simple, shipping info is all here, return policies here. You can share it with Facebook, with Twitter. Okay, it's just standard college hoodie you can pick. You've got the sizes and stuff. It's all really, really simple. It's probably, this is by far the best, the best kind of thing if you just want to create a listing without a whole website, without a whole brand and just post it. You can view it in the store, you can promote the listing, or you can order samples. This is very, very cool because this is how you can send it to Instagrammers or YouTubers to get them to influence and actually post a video or photo of them wearing your designs. Right, let's have a look at the Printful. 
process okay so you would click new template you would go to let's say men's closing clothing and then you would pick whichever one you want so this is the cheapest one eight dollars and this only comes in white black dark gray light gray and then an even lighter gray so it's it, it's just pretty much white to black right so what you would do is here this also you can do upload you can add a text right so hello youtube right same kind of process make it smaller okay you can choose color all these kind of things right you can choose embroidery if you really want so you can click yes continue and it starts to embroider it but then you have to let's add a hello youtube and it does it very small over there okay and then let's just go back to here so you can also add clip art or you can upload a file like i said i would always always upload a file and what size should the t-shirt mock up that should the file be well, let me tell you generally it's 11 by 8 when you're making a t-shirt but here just take a screenshot or something of this because this on teespring shows you all the different products that they offer and what size they should be and this is pretty much universal so this should be the same for printful as well so once you go through printful you would click continue right you would have a product title you would have product colors you would add sizes you would save the product template right now that's that the way printful now works is you would be able to go over to your shopify store and this would automatically get pushed to your shopify store and that is where you can add the description add the pricing and add all that kind of stuff so this is literally just to house the design and that's where they will be able to print it and send it to the customer so like i said this is better if you want to build your own website right and your own brand that you can eventually sell and teespring is very very good for just creating these one-off jumpers as you can see or one-off t-shirts or whatever it may be pricing strategies always try and make a minimum of ten dollars per t-shirt and fifteen dollars per hoodie Bear in mind, advertising can cost you quite a bit. On average, it's about seven to $10 per sale, depending on the t-shirt. If you want to go for more viral niches, as I have done, you could be getting sales as low as one to $2. And what I mean by getting sales as one to $2 or seven to $10 is when you create an advert, you're going to get lots of clicks to your website. And let's say each click costs $1. On average, it would be about seven clicks to 10 clicks to get one sale. So that's about seven to $10. Right, that's just an example. But with something viral, you're gonna get a lot of shares, so you're gonna get a lot more free clicks to the website. Does that make sense? This is why we want a minimum of $10 profit, so you're at least breaking even, and then you can potentially make sales from the shares of your advertisements. Now that it's the winter, start selling those hoodies. The profit margins are huge. I said in the last, the last slide that you can sell them for nearly $40, or just under $40 your profit margins are going to be insane for hoodies. How to write winning descriptions. So there are a few things you want to include. Firstly, a call to action is a must, e.g. click the green button below to order or click the red button below to order. You also want to include safe and secure checkout with credit card or PayPal. That's a good thing to say, obviously only if it's included. And then you want to say limited edition or available until is also a very good thing to say as it increases scarcity. So if it's only available for a week, then say that. Or if it's limited edition, which it will be, then say that. Because obviously it's limited edition, you're the only one that sells it and you're probably not gonna sell it forever. You want to try and get into a pain point for the customer or if it's not that kind of design, you want to trigger an emotional reaction, either sad or funny. Funny always seems to sell better, so try and trigger that emotional reaction. Section five. Time to advertise. This is the, well, I don't want to say the best section because we had the best section already and I can't keep saying each section is the best section, but this section is all about advertising and it's going to blow you away. So the advertising platforms we are going to be using are Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. And advertising is probably one of the most important elements of this entire business. And to prove that to you, I want to tell you that I made a few t-shirts Back in the day, my spelling was so bad. One of the t-shirts had a completely obvious spelling mistake, but my advertising was so on point that I still sold a humongous amount of t-shirts before I went in and changed the spelling so it was the right spelling. So the t-shirt can be 
okay, but the targeting has got to be perfect. And this is why you have to spend a bit of money testing. So how to create advertising mockups. Let's just talk about that first because we obviously need that for our different advertising platforms. I just wanted to quickly show you how you can actually create your own design using Photoshop. So here I am on Photoshop with a new document. I would pick 11, sorry, 11 over here. And it has to be inches. So 11 by eight. Okay, 300 resolution is fine. Click create. And this is going to be your t-shirt mock-up. So you want to click this and this gets rid of the background. Okay, so we'll first click this to unlock it and then click this to get rid of the background, right? And now you can create a PNG file, which is a transparent background image. So let's just do something a bit more interesting. Hello, YouTube. Now, if you want to see what you're working on, if you're working on a black t-shirt, then make this one black just so you can see the design. Uh, let's make it black all at once. Right now it allows you to actually see the design and then when you're ready to export your design you can literally just untick it and then I'll show you how to save it as well okay so let's just make something a bit different to what we made before so you can see using Photoshop or something like this allows you to pretty much make something a lot more design orientated right it allows you to really play with design and do whatever you want okay so obviously this was a stupid design, but how this would work is you would now untick this. So it's on transparent. You would click file, save as, so hello YouTube. And then you want to save this as a PNG. It's very important to save as a PNG. You click save. And then when you go to Teespring or let's just actually save this now. And then when you go to Teespring or, or Printful, you would actually just upload this design straight away. Now you, <clears throat> you can crop this or make this a bit bigger so it's edge to edge, but for now we're not really bothered. Now in terms of creating mock-ups, because this is all about creating mock-ups. Okay, so that was how you create the t-shirt. Now if you wanna create a mock-up, I personally use a website called placeit.net. This is the best website for all of this kind of stuff. All my links will be in the description below. Yes, I just want to warn you, they are affiliate links, but again, there's nothing wrong with that. But placeit.net is absolutely brilliant. So for example, you'd go to t-shirts. And when you're in t-shirts, you can have, look at all these different mock-ups. It's insane how many mock-ups they have. It's ridiculous, right? So let's upload a design. Upload this YouTube one. We'll change uh, let's add it, make it a bit bigger. Uh, in the middle, there we go. And now let's change the color. Make the color like a dark color. And watch the magic happen. This allows you for, to create so many different advertise, advertising, advertisements or images for Instagram. It's just brilliant. So let's have a look. How insane is this? How insane is this, right? Look at all these different mock-ups and it's just brilliant, right? Look at all these different photos you can have for Instagram, for Facebook, for Pinterest, for, for all of them, right? Now, as well as that, you can also do video mock-ups, right? So if you wanna make 30 second Instagram video ads or you want to make Facebook video ads or you wanna make a little YouTube video, right? You can actually create a video mock-up. In order to do that, you would just click T-shirt videos, which is right next to T-shirts over here, right? You would upload your design and it would play it. It's brilliant. So you can see how he's moving, right? It's just more of a video. So let's go for somewhere where they're moving a bit more. So for example, this one, woman in shopping carts, right? Looks like a cool video, right? You could easily post it on Instagram and Right, so let's let's pick this one, right? Let's see what it looks like with our design on it. Obviously, this will take a bit longer. So let's upload. Let's make it a bit bit bigger. Crop. And let's change the shirt color to dark gray. And now let's watch them do the magic. Look at that! It's ridiculous. That is your T-shirt on a moving video. 
preview the video. Let's have a look. Your video is being prepared. So this is really, really cool. This is brilliant for advertising on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, any of it, especially videos, because videos are the most popular form of advertising, especially now. Right, let's have a watch. So you can see, obviously, this is a rubbish design, but you can see how that is your design. It's so cool. It's really, really cool. Okay, so let's have a look at the pricing, what they charge. Okay, so in terms of pricing, it's $12.7 a month or $85 or $84.95 a year. Now, for mock-ups, $12.7 a month is nothing considering you'll probably be using this for hundreds of mock-ups across all of your t-shirts. So it's really, really not a big deal. And then you can download it very simply if you have the subscription. This is $9.95 right or free using a subscription so this video alone costs you ten dollars or it's twelve dollars a month and you can have unlimited videos so it's really really cool again the links are in the description but let's move straight on so that's just how to make mock-ups with placeit.net and actually how to create the design on photoshop firstly let's discuss facebook so i will do a screen flow of creating a page understanding audience insights managing your campaign scaling up retargeting creating retargeting audiences creating look like audiences and creating look like retargeting ads but i just want to quickly go over and explain what all of these are so creating a facebook page is going to be a must for your advertisements because you need a page to create a newsfeed ad it can be a very basic page it can be either a generic page like t-shirt biz dot like t-shirt biz page or it can be the actual niche so like cat lovers or second amendment right page like it could be something like that now the niche only page does a lot better it has as it's a lot more targeted it will convert a lot better the only issue is it's a lot more time consuming right however i do recommend doing a niche only page just because that is what i did and i i also tried the generic page and i saw a lot more results from my niche only page installing the necessary tracking so on Facebook, you'll get some sort of pixel. And as we saw before, you can actually input that pixel into Teespring's backend and it will track everything for you. Understanding audience insights. So audience insights is where you will go to actually find an audience. So you'll find where they're from, what their interests are, their ages, and everything there is to know about them. And then that's how you will dial down a super laser targeted audience that you can later go and target in a Facebook ad. The five by five by five method is a brilliant method. That is when you have five ads targeting five different interests for $5 each, okay? Now you can have not necessarily five different interests, you can have one interest, five different countries or five interests, one country or five different ages, one interest. So I'll explain that a bit more. You're gonna have one ad, okay? I know I said five, but one minute. You're gonna have one photo ad and then you're going to create five ads for that ad okay and those five ads could be five different types of ages five different interests five different countries right you want to really dial the the ads down to such small measures because you want to find the winning design so you can pump all your money into that winning ad so you want to find the winning ad not the winning design you want to be able to find the winning ad so you can pump all your money into that tiny little audience and make a huge amount of money because of the incredible conversion rates and the times five is each ad should cost you five dollars per day and that way you're spending 25 dollars per day on five ads have them all running but for around two to three days you're looking at spending 50 to 75 dollars testing one t-shirt with five different ads and by the end of this you'll be able to go in see which ad is getting you the most sales because of the tracking that you recently just put into your teespring website and once you see which t-shirts get you the most sales pour all your money into that ad and that's where you're going to make your money back that's where you're going to have the lowest cost per conversion the lowest cost per click and that's where you're going to have the highest conversion rates the video funnel method is a bit more interesting that is slightly different and i've spoken about this a lot on my youtube on my youtube account on my youtube channel i should say and this is more for videos, but it can work with t-shirts because just before you saw when I was telling you how to make a mock-up, you could actually make video mock-ups. So the video method is where you target, you create a video and you target a certain group of people. And then there's no links, nothing. And then you create another video targeting the people who only watch that video. 
right? Still no links. And then the third video, so now it's super laser targeted because you're targeting the people who watch the second video. And the people who watch the second video, you're targeting the people who watch the first video. So for the third video, they have had to have watched video one and video two, and that's where you put the link in. And that's where you get them to buy, and that's where it's super laser targeted. And the website clicks should be very, very cheap, and you should have very high conversions. So that's the video funnel method. And you create retargeting audiences on all of them, and then lookalike audiences, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Then you want to know how to manage your campaign. So that's obviously I'll have to show you in a screen flow. That's just managing the advertisements and all the different campaigns to see how that works. And then you've got scaling up. Scaling up is simple. You want to increase your budget by 50%. So if you've put $10 per day in, don't double it to $20. Just put another $5 in and only do 50% a day. Otherwise, you'll end up paying a lot more per click and you don't want to do that. You want to keep your clicks low. Retargeting, okay, so this is where your pixel comes in handy. You can retarget everyone that has visited your page and not bought your product. This is amazing because you can make an ad specifically for those people saying, what happened? Why did you leave? Or you left your item in your basket? Something like that, right? You can be laser targeted. You can target people who's literally left their item in their basket. And this is why Printful and Shopify together, I feel are a lot better because the, the the tracking and the targeting is a lot easier. You can literally target people who've left it in their cart. You could target people who visit the website for a certain amount of time. You could target literally anything, okay? And then you want to test out click to website ads. So the five by five by five method is more of a post page engagement ad. And that is to try and get more virality on your ad because you want to get likes, shares, and comments. And that way you'll get a lot more people seeing it. But once you've found a winning t-shirt, one that you know is working, one that is getting good viral shares on the other ads, you want to create a clicks to website ad or a conversion ad. And that way, instead of paying for someone to like, comment or share, you're paying for someone to click the link. So it's going to be a bit more expensive, but you know this is a winning design, so it's worth spending that money to have more traffic driven to your website. And then we're gonna look at creating or targeting audiences. I'll show you how to do that creating a lookalike audience, I'll show you how to do that. And then when you actually go and create an ad, you can select your lookalike audience or your retargeting audience. So firstly, I just wanted to quickly show you, creating a page is super easy. You literally just click here, create, create page. I'm not going to go through creating a page with you because it is literally very, very easy and that's not really what I wanted this video to be. But again, it's very easy. Right now, in terms of installing the necessary tracking, we already went through that. Understanding audience insights. So you'd go here, you'd go to your advertise your advertising um business manager. Once you've done that, so let's select one, let's just select this Latin Nation one. I have a few. Alright, if you then go into tools, plan, audience insights, right now. Let's just quickly talk about audience insights. Right, so everyone on Facebook, and let's say you want to target just the United States, you want to target between the age of 18, or no, let's say you want to target between the age of 18, 24, and 31, right? You want to target people who are married, okay? So married. You can do a newlywed three months, six months, or one year, okay? Then you can target education. You can target interests. So let's say interests are... This is Sausage Dog Central. Now, obviously, it's gone down to seventy to 80,000 people, but you can obviously target other Sausage Dog. Sausage Dog, let's do Dog Rescue, okay? People love, Dog Rescue people love buying T-shirts. All right, not that Dog Rescue, that's the employees. Animal Rescue Group. Bam, that's a one million audience. Now, you don't want the audience to be more than about 500,000. The sweet spot is about 300,000 if you can, right? And now you can go through and you can actually see the pages that they like, the location that they're in, the activity that they're doing. So you can see the bloggers that they like, the websites that they like, the other pages to get some other ideas, right? You've got activity here. So let's get rid of dog rescue because it's just... So let's get rid of Animal Rescue because it's just too broad. And let's just go back to just Sausage Dog Central. It just sounds funny saying that. Um, so you've got pages that they like, right? I love my Dutch Hound. I love Dutch Hounds. This is brilliant. Okay, so you've got two more pages that you could target. Look at the size of these pages. Brilliant. All right, you've got location. This is where they're based mostly. You've got activity. 
right? And you've got demographics, okay? So you can actually see activity, people who like post, people who comment, share, ads clicked. This is insane. You can just target just the people who click ads. Oh, this is brilliant. Okay, so this is how you would use audience insights. And once you've done this, you can actually create an ad with this audience. So you can save the audience and click create an ad with that audience. Right now, in terms of managing your campaign, so if I go to, let's cancel. If I go to ads manager, let's leave. Right now, you're not gonna actually see any ads because this is not that account. But for example, let's just pick this one, right? So this was a video views, right? It got 1,600 views, 14,000 impressions. So when it comes to managing it, you can have a column at the end. You can add a column, right? Which is going to be the, which is going to be your sales column. So you can customize columns, right? And you can add conversions, right? And now because we put the pixel in, we'll actually be able to create conversions. Standard events, we can do clicks, all of these kind of things. And then we can also do sales, right? So when someone buys cost per sale, it's really, really cool. All right, so that's what you'd add there. And then that's the number you would see to see if you're getting any sales or how many sales an ad is getting, okay? So here I can see the reach, the impressions, the cost per result, all these kind of things. Right, let's talk about retargeting. So retargeting is using the retargeting pixel, but we're gonna just jump to creating a retargeting audience. So you'd wanna go into the, the burger menu, click audiences, and now you want to click create new audience, okay? So let's just let it load. Right, so you click create an audience, you can create a custom audience or a lookalike audience. A lookalike audience is usually based off one of your custom audiences, okay? So you do website, customer list, app activity, offline activity, if they've watched a video, um, if Instagram business profile, like you can really create super custom audiences, okay? So if you're doing retargeting, you do it off your website and then you'd put your website name in and all the information and you click create the audience. Right now, when it comes to creating an ad, let's go through and create an ad, okay? And I'll actually show you how you can create an ad based on your audiences. So let's click create, right? So let's say you're going for video views. <clears throat> this doesn't really matter at the moment. Let's just click continue, right? And now when it comes to audiences, you can say custom audience. So you can use, as you can see here, I've got a custom audience on my 50%, people who viewed 50% of my video. Then I've got a lookalike audience of those people who viewed 95% of my video. And you can see how it works, right? So this is where you select your custom audience. So let's just say I'm selecting this audience, okay? I don't need to do anything else because it's all in here. And then I would just go through and click continue and create the ad. So that is all I really wanted to tell you on Facebook. If you have more questions about the Facebook advertising side of this, these, this, then please leave a comment down below or DM me on Instagram. I'll be happy to help you a bit more. Let's have a look at Instagram. So firstly, you obviously need to start your own page. The page should match the Facebook page. Again, if you're doing niche, then it should be the niche Instagram page. The annoying thing about this is Having multiple Facebook pages is pretty easy, but having multiple Instagram pages is a bit annoying. I know you can jump through all your pages on your Instagram account very simply, just by jumping to another account without having to log out or log in. However, having a lot of Instagram pages can be quite annoying. So you can have a generic Instagram page if you want. You wanna create posts. How often and what posts do you wanna create? So I think posting between two and three times a day is pretty good. Don't always post the T-shirt sometimes post just about the niche. So for example, if you have a cat t-shirt, you should have more posts that aren't sales related. So for every five posts, you should probably have one sales related post. So you want five maybe cat memes or cat gifts or something cat funny. You want funny because funny shares, funny is a lot more viral than anything else. So let's say you have five funny cat photos, then you have one photo of your t-shirt with a link to go and buy. And then you have another five cat and then one link to your t-shirt. Now, if you're doing three posts a day, you're looking at sending a link to your t-shirt every other day, okay? Running ads for that post, in-app ads. So you can actually run ads to an Instagram post by literally clicking promote. And then you can go in and choose a specific target audience. If you've created an audience on Facebook already, you can use that audience, so maybe go into Facebook because it's a lot bigger, you could target a lot more people, and create a very niche target for your product. If it's cats, make it a cat-related one. And then in Instagram, you can target that specific post if you really want. 
influencer marketing on Instagram. Influ influ oh, I can't say the word. Influencer marketing is huge on Instagram and that's pretty much where you pay someone with a large following to either post your picture, to wear your t-shirt, or to pretty much shout out to you or your post. Now the best kind is for them to wear the t-shirt and say go and buy this t-shirt I'm wearing because then it looks like they it's their t-shirt and their followers will trust them a lot more than if they just say go and check out this person's t-shirt and buy it. It's not as good. I know it will cost a bit more to send them a t-shirt and to get them to actually put it on and take a photo, but that is the best kind of influencer marketing that you could be doing. You also want to make sure you're using stories for maximum exposure. So you want to have a story going every single day. Again, it can be a story of your life. It can be a story of funny cat memes. It can be whatever, but just make sure you have a story going. And every so often, every like eighth or ninth story, have a post to your t-shirt. And then as soon as you get to 10,000 followers, you can actually have swipe up in your story. So that's a great way you could swipe up and go straight to the website to buy the t-shirt. That's where sales will start coming in really, really well, which is why I said it's probably better to have one Instagram page, but lots of Facebook pages, just because having individual Facebook pages, Instagram pages, sorry, and getting them all to 10,000 is going to be very hard. The only benefit of having individual Instagram pages is you can keep it super niche. So you can keep it just around cats or just around dogs or just around guns. It's going to be very hard to run a generic Instagram page for tons of different niches because people are not going to know what's going on. People aren't going to buy a gun person who's followed your t-shirt page because they saw a gun post is not going to buy a cat t-shirt that you post on your page. So even though I'm going to just change what I thought before, but even though it's hard to get to 10,000 to get that swipe up for stories. I would have individual Instagram pages because it's a lot more targeted. And then from your stories, create some highlights. You want to pretty much beef up your page, make it look like it's been used, make it look really, really good. YouTube, let's talk about YouTube. So you've got just generic YouTube videos like this, like I'm making right now. Okay, they will get however many views, 50, 100, 1,000, a million, whatever many views they get. That is one way to have a shout out to your t-shirt. And then you've got YouTube influence marketing, which is similar to uh, Instagram. The reason why it's less common is because usually YouTubers will have their own line of t-shirts if they have a big enough audience. So they probably won't want to design or market yours. And if you ask them to, it doesn't make much sense because let's say a YouTuber charges you a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars to make a video about your t-shirt they could just go and make a similar t-shirt and take all the profit themselves from that from their audience. So this isn't as prominent, right? YouTube influ influence marketing isn't such a big one. But YouTube advertising, on the other hand, is pretty good. So you can create a video, a 30 second video or a 10 minute video or an hour long video, and you can advertise it on YouTube and you can get very, very targeted. So you can target specific pages, specific channels, specific keywords, you can get retargeted. So you can target a whole bunch of cat channels and cat videos, viral cat content. There's so much of it, you can target that and you can target that with your cat t-shirt. What you could even do, is you can find a cat video that's so popular or a cat channel that's so popular and you can make a t-shirt specifically for that audience. So for example, if that cat video happens to be, uh, I don't really know cats, but if it happened to be a, a type of cat, I'm not really a cat person, but if it happens to be a type of cat, you can make the t-shirt with that type of cat on it, right? So it looks like the t-shirt has been made for that audience and it's a really, really targeted. So that's another brilliant way to advertise. And finally, you have TikTok. So there are no notes here because I just wanted to talk to you about TikTok. TikTok is very new, it's very up, up and coming. And you're probably thinking TikTok is for kids, it's for dancing, it's for music, it is not for me. But you couldn't be more wrong. Firstly, you could actually advertise on TikTok now. So that in itself is huge and it's going to be very cheap because it's so new. But in terms of just posting on TikTok, because TikTok is such a, a new platform, it's so easy to go viral. One of my posts has got over 200,000 views on TikTok and I only had 30 followers at the time. So it's very easy to go viral on TikTok, especially if you're posting stuff like funny cat memes or dog memes or anything viral, any viral kind of content, very easy. And then you can create maybe five to 10 TikToks a day. And for every 10 TikToks, post one TikTok about your t-shirt. And back earlier where I told you about place it and actually creating mock-ups, you can create video mock-ups, so you can actually create mock-ups for TikTok. And you can always buy a sample 
of your t-shirt on Printful or Teespring so that you can be wearing it in your videos. If you don't want to be in the video yourself, then you can just have videos of, you can redo other people's videos of cat memes or whatever. But TikTok is huge and it's very, very easy to go viral and it's very easy to get sales because of the virality of it. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. It wasn't as long as you probably thought it was going to be. I wanted to try and keep it really to the point. I just wanted to tell you everything you need to know about creating a print on demand business. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below or DM me on Instagram at shimmymorris1, okay? Or you can send me an email, but DM, I'll probably respond to a DM a lot more than my emails, just because I get so many emails. But I hope you liked this video, and again, if you did at this point, please give the video a like, and please, please share it, because you've just spent this entire time watching it. Think about how long it took you to watch it. It took me 10 times that amount of time to make it, so I would really, really appreciate it. If you could share this video, it would mean so much to me. And I just want to say one more time, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you start your businesses. And just in case you need, the links for all, everything is going to be below in the description. Yes, they are affiliate links, but I mean, that's just the way the world's working. There's nothing wrong with affiliate links here. That is how I'm gonna get paid for making something like this because I'm giving this course away for free on YouTube and that is kind of how it works. So definitely sign up below if you wanna do anything and yeah thanks for watching i'll see you in tomorrow's video